So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Kamel Kral. I am from the Department of Forest Ecology, the Silva Taroka Research Institute, based in Brno. And I'm going to give this presentation on behalf of uh, Martin Kruček, who is the first author, and unfortunately cannot be here really today. So greetings from Martin to all of you. And I will do my best because uh, I have to admit I'm not uh, a software developer nor a programmer. Uh, so that's why maybe the, uh, the presentation will be more general, no focus on uh, code uh, we have seen in the previous, code, the previous talk. But uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, there is an outline of the presentation that Martin uh, prepared for me, probably not to get lost. <laughs> uh, so uh, I will say a few words how it started, uh, current functionality of 3D forest, why we decided to rebuild it, uh, and what is actually the new design, and where are we now. And, uh, and uh, maybe uh, to have some interaction with you, I would like to have a feedback from you. Uh, who is familiar with 3D forest or have ever heard about 3D forest? Please, hands up. Yeah, not so bad. <laughs> uh, who actually uh, really used it? Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and is there anybody who tried to look in the source code? Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, how it started? Uh, to, to tell about the beginnings, we have to go back in 2010 or even 2009. We had started to collect first uh, point clouds in our forest reserves, in old growth forests. And we, as many of you were in the same problem, facing the same problem, how to get the desired information from the point cloud we just scanned. At the, that time, there was barely any existing software doing this, this perhaps first algorithms uh, available. So we had to invest our coding skills and time to get this information. Uh, and it was actually the work of, uh, of my former PhD student, Jan Trochta, who was uh, in this first stage of development. So at the end, we had uh, this information and the code, and uh, it was uh, like a big decision to just uh, finish in this coding, and, uh, or we could do more and uh, make this, the, the code available to others. Uh, possibly in a way that it will have some user interface and also people with known, no coding skills as myself <laughs> could they use the tool and get the information again. And uh, yeah, so, uh, pro so some of you know how it works. Basically the pipeline is similar and is in other softwares. We separate the ground and vegetation. Then we do uh, tree segmentation. Completely agree with uh, Kim, uh, it's the bottleneck and uh, probably still be for a while uh, until we get some real fancy AI algorithm or I don't know. And uh, yeah. Once you have good segmentation, then it's quite easy. You can measure tree, position, DBH, height, uh, planar projection, whatever. Uh, you can uh, make a calculate branching order. Uh, 3D Forest has also some basic QSM, not the best one, uh, and some module for wood quality assortment. And uh, yeah, uh, 3D Forest always has been typical for focusing on Crowns, so we measure crown dimensions, crown height, uh, including surface and volume, either of using convex or concave hull or voxels of different sizes. And uh, we also 
did uh, ground to ground intersections in terms of studying uh, canopy com competition on, uh, uh, on the level of individual trees. On the other hand, we, we are really aware of uh, limits uh, of the, the software in its current form uh, and it's related also with the issue Marcus was talking about, the, the extent or the size of data is far beyond the, the state it was 10 years ago. So in both in terms of the, the extent of uh, the forest you scan, the, the area is now in, in hectares, uh, the density of the point cloud you have and the completeness is several times larger than it used to be. Uh, so working with 3D forest now on such large data is a bit annoying. You need a lot of tiling. Uh, visualization of the point cloud is slow because uh, there is no algorithm, just uh, all points are vis visualized at once. And uh, what is pretty annoying for users is that uh, there is no uh, way to save a project with uh, some in, in some intermediate state of uh, processing, so no saving of interim results. And uh, from the developer point of view, it's also, it's maybe worse <laughs> because the code uh, uh, is, uh, is written in a way that uh, any adding of new functions needs a lot of changing of, of the code uh, and uh, so the code became a bit messy and it's really hard to get familiar, familiar for external contributors to the code. Uh, and there is also large dependency on third party libraries which makes uh, uh, really some troubles, uh, version conflicts of, on compilation because the libraries can have uh, new versions and, and different libraries then have uh, uh, problems with the compatibility and uh, it was, that's all also caused the software bloat. So we get, got back to the drawing board and uh, decided to do better. And uh, now the architecture is quite, it's completely different. Uh, we used last file for point clouds, uh, which is probably the best choice because yeah, last is, uh, to the, the golden standard exchanging format. So the, there is no redundancy in uh, uh, using other software specific format. It's easy to transfer and share. We use JSON file for anything else. Uh, and this also uh, standardized uh, human readable, uh, human readable soft, uh, uh, soft, uh, file format uh, can be used in other softwares and uh, we use index file for indexing the point clouds for faster visualization and uh, faster processing. Uh, so with this architecture, we expect uh, easy uh, adding of new functions in, in the form of plugins. Uh, there is a SQL-like API for data accessing, whatever it means. Uh, there is a limited third party dependency and the better scalability and uh, maintenance is of the software is expected. So there is a new uh, graphical user interface which allows uh, vis visualization of points using many different attributes. Uh, there is a dynamic loading of points, uh, depends on the scale. Uh, or zoom in or zoom, up, zoom out in the direction you are looking, so uh, should work pretty fast for visualization. Uh, there are dockable panels uh, and many other features I probably forgot to mention. And uh, where are we now? So, you know, th this uh, idea to, to rebuild 3D forest is like several years old, uh, but the hard decision came when, when, when we had some resources to do it, which, which was a more than, yeah, it was last year, so 
we started uh, at the beginning of last year and uh, now the new core is uh, ready uh, with a little bit of testing and just now we are in the phase of uh, uh, transferring the functions that old 3D Forest had to the, to the new core and uh, of course with some improvements for example for segmentation we would like to have uh, some uh, in some direct uh, direct uh, feedback with the with the operator uh, using some swiping buttons uh, for setting the algorithms of some subset and to see directly what what's happening with the point cloud in in terms of segmentation and uh, yeah what else we uh, we need to transfer other functions after segmentation, which shouldn't be so difficult, because yeah, as was said, segmentation is the key, the good segmentation, and then we need more testing, uh, and uh, we will release new fun a new version, and then we expect to add more functions because uh, should be much easier than it was before. So. so Summary, it's completely new software basically. <laughs> Should be better and faster, easier for development and maintenance. It's also for, from the third parties. Uh, there is a new graphical user inf interface and uh, working, work is in progress. What is, uh, yeah, uh, of course the progress depends on resources and uh, we don't have any specific project for this, so we do it like more from our enthusiasm. Uh, so I, I expect also that this uh, cost action would be a, another impulse to to work on, on it uh, harder. Yeah, uh, all is on a GitHub. All, all the code is on, on, on the GitHub already. Uh, even uh, if this stage of, uh, you know, uh, is, the software is really premature, but you are, uh, you are, uh, please feel free to access it and uh, give first comments. And uh, my wish in the future is that, uh, you know, different, uh, it's really like, like secret wish, uh, it different uh, algorithms already existing and uh, also in this uh, audience, uh, you have really several great algorithms that uh, we could make them uh, available for non-coding persons uh, in form of plugins of, of the 3D forest. So uh, that's all, and uh, if there are some questions, I can try to answer if they are not so focused. <laughs> Thank you, Camila. Thank you for stepping in for Martin. Are there any questions in the audience? Thank you. Could you please tell us a bit more about the requirements of the plugins in terms of uh, language or structure? Uh, yeah, the core is uh, C++, uh, written in language C++, but the plugins, I was told that plugins can be basically in any code, so. So even, for instance, uh, Python scripts or? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have you been in contact with the developers of Computri? Because uh, from what I saw, it's, uh, you are sharing exactly the same philosophy, and uh, Computry was also made for specifically for plugins. Yeah, uh, but it's quite time ago, like uh, maybe eight years. <laughs> right. Well, thank you again, Camille.